In this video, we are going to study about Euler tools. As in for the first to start, uh, we are starting with definitions. The first definition is about a walk. So, what is a walk? A walk in a graph is a finite non-empty or non-null sequence uh, which is comprising of alternatively vertices, edges, vertices, edges, vertices, etc., uh, edges and vertices and a vertex. So, you can see uh, it can be um, depicted as W, uh, a walk is equal to V0, E1, V1, E2, V2, etc., EK, VK, where V0, V1, V2, etc., VK are vertices and E1, E2, etc., EK are edges. So, uh, the terms are alternatively vertices and edges as you can see. A trail in a graph G is a, work, is a walk in which the edges are distinct. The edges in this walk should be distinct. Then we call that walk as a trail. A trail that transverses every edge of G is called an Euler trail of G. Okay. So these are the basic first definitions of uh, this section that are coming. And then we are going to uh, see something about the Konigsberg bridge problem. So, uh, the fact was that uh, we call uh, the trail uh, mentioned before, the trail which um, traverses to every edge of G to be an Euler trail, right? So, this is called so because Euler was the first person to discuss the existence of such trails in graphs. So, uh, this is, uh, you can see a figure here, which is a construction plan of seven bridges, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven bridges of Konigsberg and the river, river Pregel. So you can see the river uh, and the bridges. So th this is a construction plan. So you have seven bridges and we can see there are four land masses, right? Four towns, A, B, C and D. So a famous question during that time was that, is it possible to cross each edge of each of the seven bridges of Konigsberg once and only once during a walk through the town. So we are going to walk through the town and we have to just cross each of the seven bridges bridges just once. Is it possible for such a situation or such um, uh, is, is, is uh, the answer to this question yes or no? So that was a famous question during that time. So to solve this problem, uh, Euler graph theoretically, theoretically depicted the plan uh, as seen here. Okay, so here the towns became vertices and the bridges became edges of this graph. And he reconstructed or refigured the question, uh, which was uh, famous during that time. Uh, Two, does there exist an Euler trail for this graph? So uh, answering this question and this question is the same as what Euler figured out and uh, he said that the answer is no. This, uh, this graph sitting here doesn't have an Euler trail. So the answer to this question, is it possible to cross each of the seven bridges of Konigsberg once and only once during a walk to the town? And the answer is no. Both of the question are um, the same, one and the same. They are just uh, being discussed in different manner. Okay. So, uh, this is how the term Euler, Euler trail came into existence uh, while uh, solving the problem of Konigsberg, the bridges of Konigsberg. And then comes some more definitions. A tour is a close walk that traverses each edge of G at least once. An Euler tour is a tour which traverses each edge exactly once. So, a tour, as we say, whenever we go for a tour, if we are going to a place, we want to see all the place, right? So, uh, a tour is a close walk that travels each edge of G at least once. At least we should see a, the place we are going at least once. In all a tour, uh, it is a tour. Uh, suppose we say that the time limit for the tour is limited. So, we will see each place exactly once. That will be the uh, best possible solution, right? So, that is the difference between a tour and an Euler tour. A tour is a close walk that travels, it starts from a point and ends at that point and it travels each edge of G at least once. An Euler tour is a tour which travels each edge exactly once. 
So actually oiler tool is a, is a closed oiler tray. And also we can call a graph as an oiler in graph if it con contains an oiler tool. If a graph contains an oiler tool in it, we call the graph as an oiler in graph. Now comes the main theorem of the section, uh, which gives the characterization of an Euler in graph, how to see whether a given graph is Eulerian or not. Uh, this theorem 4.1 says that a non-empty connected graph is Eulerian if and only if it has no vertices of odd degree. So this graph connected non-empty graph is Eulerian if and only if it has only vertices of even degree. That's what it says, right? So suppose... Um, we take uh, this uh, highlighted yellow part is always in a hypothesis. So let G be a non-empty connected graph. We took G as such. And suppose we assumed G is an Euler in graph. So we have to prove that uh, G has no vertices of odd degree. Okay. So since G is Eulerian, uh, it guarantees the existence of an Euler to C in G such that C is having its origin and terminus as some vertex u. We are fixing that vertex u. Okay. So suppose in this Eulerian uh, Euler tool, uh, you have an internal vertex v. Okay. So uh, as an example, you can see a figure here. So suppose if this is v, so you know that an edge is as we move through the Euler tool, an edge is entering into v and an edge is leaving from v. Right. So this situation contributes two degrees to the internal vertex V in C. So this happens for every internal vertex uh, that is in this Euler tour C, right? So since C is being an Euler tour, it contains all edges of G. We already said uh, all uh, uh, C is an Euler tour which traverses through all edges exactly once. So it contains all edges of G. Since all edges are in this Euler tool, definitely all uh, vertices of G will also be there, right? So for every vertex V belongs to V of G, it can be categorized into two cases. One case is that V is an internal vertex of C. And the other case is that uh, this V is nothing but the origin and terminus of S of C, which we had fixed as U. Okay, so you have two cases. So if V is an internal vertex of C, as we mentioned before, there will be a contribution of two edges to V because whenever there will be an edge entering and an edge leaving the vertex when we are thinking about in the context of the Euler to C, right? So there will be always a contribution of two degrees to this internal vertex V. So degree of V will be even when V is an internal vertex of C. Hmm? The second case is when V is equal to U, that is when V is the origin and, origin and terminus of C. So, in this case, degree of V is equal to degree of U. That is also even as C starts with an edge and ends with an edge at U, right? So, there will be always a contribution of uh, even number of uh, times edges coming for this U. So, the same uh, logic works for case 1 and case 2. And all vertices of V belongs to V of G are of even degree. That's what we conclude from the first part. Next, we have to prove the converse part. So conversely, we are going to prove that uh, we actually wanted to prove, uh, suppose if uh, the graph has no vertices of odd degree, we have to prove the graph is Eulerian. So you are going to use a contrapositive statement. That is, uh, we will assume that G is not Eulerian and then we say that uh, it has uh, vertices, of odd, uh, vertices of odd degree. So, uh, suppose we, as we said, uh, G is not Eulerian, we have taken like that. And already we had taken G is a non-empty connected graph. So, we first claim that G has at least one edge. Okay. So, suppose if not, suppose that G does not have an even one edge. And then since G is connected, we know that the only possibility is that G is a trivial graph with a single vertex, right? So, it is definitely... Eulerian because a trivial graph is Eulerian as there is a trivial Euler tool in it, right? But we assume that G is not Eulerian, so we have a contradiction there. 
that means g cannot be a trivial graph therefore g should have at least one edge uh, since this g is connected also right so we got a claim that g should at have at least one edge okay now we have to prove as we said we have to prove that all vertices of g are of odd degree so suppose on the contrary let all vertices in g are of even degree so we are assuming the contrary statement okay for our convenience let g be a graph with all the above properties we mentioned now having as many few edges as possible so what are the properties that is g is one we took it to be non empty g is connected g is not eulerian g is having all vertices with even degree in the converse part we have taken all this right and uh, fifth one is g has at least one edge sixth one is the graph with minimum number of edges having all the properties 1 to 5 these are all the properties that g is having why i have listed all these because we are going to use that while we move further into the proof okay so um, so g is uh, the g is a graph having minimum number of edges with all these properties coming up okay since all vertices in g are of even degree okay uh, every vertex is having even degree means degree of v will be greater than or equal to 2 for every v belongs to v of g that is right and we claim that g contains a closed rail because of this okay how to prove this okay to prove this uh, claim suppose on the contrary suppose g does not contain a closed rail okay and let p be a longest path in g how can we take a path in g definitely there will be walks in g uh, because g is connected and we can form paths from g and you take the longest path with the longest number of edges uh, i mean uh, the maximum number of edges you take all the paths in g and take the uh, path which has the maximum number of edges in g so su such a path obviously exists since g is a finite graph definitely such a path exists now let v be the final vertex in p okay since degree of v is greater than or equal to 2 there exists at least two edges e1 and e2 which are incident on v because degree of v will be greater than or equal to 2 inside g right we took every vertex is having um, even uh, degree so that will be greater than or equal to 2 right uh, so uh, we know that there are at least e1 and e2 being incident on v and um, and v took v to be the uh, final uh, vertex in p also so among this e1 and e2 suppose you say e1 is the last edge in the path we are discussing say from here see the path is moving like this and then it moves to here till here so so this is v and this is e1 which is the last edge of the path p okay so let e2 is equal to vw it is not in the path and note that this w cannot be w cannot be for example you can uh, to illustrate i have uh, shown in, uh, shown a figure here so note that this w cannot be any vertex in p so if suppose this w is happening to be this vertex okay uh, and that will end up creating a closed trail. So it is not possible for W to be uh, equal to any vertex in P. So this claim is being um, illustrated here. So if W happens to be in P, we are going to get a closed trail, which is not possible because we assume that G does not have a closed trail in the proof of the claim first, which is... Uh, this closed trail will be uh, starting with the vertex v as you said uh, as we said uh, vertex v then edge e2 then this section which is colored yellow the part of the path p from w to v but we assume that g has uh, g has no closed trail therefore the edge e2 and w are never part of the path p they can never become part of the path p so we can form a new path p dash which is nothing but uh, we are going to add the edge e2 along with p which is in turn a contradiction to the fact that p is the longest path in g we have taken like that right 
therefore g contains a so we cannot uh, we cannot say that g doesn't have a closed trail so we conclude that g contains a closed trail and we prove our claim okay so now that we understood that this g will definitely have a closed trail uh, suppose c is a closed trail of uh, maximum possible length in g okay so uh, since g is an is not eulerian c will definitely not be an euler tour in g that is c does not contain all the edges in g so that will imply if you are considering the graph g minus the edge edges in c that will be a graph having at least one edge right because not all edges are in c so when we are removing the edges from c there will remain some edges in this g minus e of c that's what uh, being said here g minus e of c will be a graph having at least one edge so g minus e of c may or may not be connected also also uh, that is a possibility so definitely g minus e of c will have a connected component g dash having some uh, edges in it definitely uh, such that epsilon of g dash is strictly greater than 0 because well, we mentioned the reason before here taking c itself as a graph take c as such as a graph and we know that the c is a closed rail okay think about c itself as a graph we know that it is euler in by itself right so from the first part of theorem we said that whenever a graph is eulerian it will have all its vertices to be having even degree so the c will have a degree to be even when considered by itself right so uh, g is having all vertices with even degree we assumed so and we just said c has all vertices of even degree so g minus e of c this graph will also have all vertices to be of even degree okay so in particular the connected component g dash of the graph g minus e of c will also have all vertices of even degree and note that epsilon of g dash is strictly less than epsilon of g what is epsilon of g dash the number of edges in g dash is strictly less than the number of edges in g but as we said g was a graph with six properties we mentioned that before among these properties the new graph g dash g dash is actually the connected component of g minus the edge set of c so g dash has the properties uh, a properties uh, one it is non empty uh, this property is being satisfied there see here uh, two the second property is also satisfied and the fourth property having all the vertices with even degree that is also we mentioned before and it has at least one edge definitely and this um, is having less than uh, the number of edges of g dash will be less than the number of edges of g right so here this graph g was the minimum uh, the graph was the graph with minimum number of edges having all these properties 1 to 5. So the only property that was missing here is the property of uh, G being not Eulerian. So this G dash if it is Euler if it is not Eulerian that will give us trouble. So we can conclude that G dash should be Eulerian otherwise the, the properties of G will get affected right. So, we conclude from there that G dash has to be Eulerian. So, since G dash has to be Eulerian, G dash will have an Euler to C dash. And since G is connected, the vertex set of the cycle C, the closed trail C, and the vertex set of this Euler to C dash will be non empty. So, there exists such a vertex, V belongs to V of C intersection v of c dash so assume without loss of general generality that this v is itself the origin and terminus of c and c dash which implies that c c dash is a closed trail in g such that the edge the number of edges of c c dash will be strictly greater than the number of edges of c that is definite because when we are considering c and c c dash the closed trails uh, definitely uh, this will happen so this will contradict the fact that c is the closed trail of g having the maximum possible length because you got a closed trail 
which is uh, having more number of edges than that of C, right? So uh, we reached a contradiction and thus G will have definitely vertices of odd degree. So by contrapositive statement, we prove that when G has all vertices to be of even degree, then G is Eulerian. So that's how we prove the characterization theorem for uh, Eulerian graphs. And you have a corollary coming uh, after that, corollary 4.1. A connected graph has an Euler trail if and only if it has at most two vertices of odd degree. So suppose G is a connected graph. Assume that G, is an, G has an Euler trail. Uh, since every edge of G is in it, every vertex of G will also be in that Euler tra trail. If a vertex be in this Euler trail, one edge enters and one edge leaves contributing to two degrees as we mentioned in the earlier proof right so that is degree of v is even for every internal vertex v so we are left with just two vertices origin and terminus of the Euler trail so possibilities are uh, the two among them will have odd degree so here it is said that at most at most means zero one or two the possibilities of uh, number of odd vertices so two among the vertices which we just mentioned uh, will have odd degree that is one possibility and the second possibility is none among them zero among them have odd degree uh, why because we are we are excluding the possibility of one among them one among them having odd degree because uh, we know by first theorem on graph theory that the total number of vertices of odd degree should be even so the only possibilities are uh, 0 and 2 okay so we proved uh, the forward part and then we have to prove the converse part so assume that g has at most two vertices of odd degree so case one suppose if g is trivial okay if g is trivial g just have one vertex call it v so its degree is equal to 0 uh, uh, 0 is considered even uh, then G has zero number of vertices of odd degree and definitely G is Eulerian because uh, it is trivial actually. So we consider case two, suppose if G is non-trivial. So suppose if N is the number of vertices of G having odd degree. So as earlier I mentioned, uh, by first theorem on graph theory, its corollary mentions that the total number of vertices having odd degree uh, should be even. So the possibilities for this N will be N equal to zero and N equal to one. We discount uh, n is equal to 1. It is not possible because of first theorem on graph theory. So, when n equal to 0, then all vertices of G are of even degree, right? So, that will mean uh, G is Eulerian by our theorem 4.1, which we discussed just now. That is, G has an Euler tool, which is actually a closed Euler trail. So, we prove this for n equal to 0. Now, suppose if n is equal to 2. So, let u and v be the vertices of odd degree. Uh, which counts for this two. So let E be an edge uh, such that E is equal to UV. Consider a new graph G plus E. Okay. Uh, and since uh, this U had already odd degree, you're going to add an edge to this U, right? So the degree of U will become even. Similarly, the degree of V also will be become even, right? So uh, every uh, vertex will be having uh, even degree here. Okay, so uh, G, uh, in this new graph, G plus E. So since all the vertices are having uh, even degree by the earlier theorem, uh, theorem 4.1, by theorem 4.1, G plus E will be an Eulerian graph. So G plus E will have an Euler tool, say, uh, call it C, which is equal to V not E1, V1, etc. E epsilon plus 1, V epsilon plus 1, okay? Where V not is equal to U, V1 is equal to V, E1 is equal to E, and V epsilon plus 1 is nothing but V not, which is equal to U. So here, epsilon is equal to epsilon of G, and epsilon of G plus E definitely epsilon plus 1. We are just adding one more edge, which is the edge E equal to UV. So now we can form the trail V1, we just remove this first section here. We remove uh, till here, V0 and E1. And then we start with V1. We are going to remove here. Okay. 
So you have the new trail V1, E2, V2, etc. E epsilon plus 1, V epsilon plus 1, which is actually a Euler trail in G. So that's what we have to prove in this corollary. So we proved the two cases, n is equal to 0, n is equal to 2. n is equal to 1, we are not taking because as we said, it will not come by the first theorem or graph theorem. So that's what the corollary of this uh, characterization of Euler in graphs uh, and how we prove that. So thank you for watching this video.